We are still on the benefit of the communion of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the price you paid for us to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is wonderful. The Holy Spirit is the gift of the Father to us. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father to us. And uh, if we don't know this wonderful personality, everything Jesus said about the Holy Spirit will become a mirage. We might have a head knowledge of what Jesus said, but we will not walk in the reality of what the, Jesus said concerning the Holy Spirit. So today, there's need for us to return to communion. We return to the Holy Spirit. We start spending time with the Holy Spirit in spending time with the most we spend time with the holy spirit in the place of communion where we get to know how wonderful the holy spirit is and this special blessing the presence the manifest presence of jesus christ will become a blessing that we carry the word the word is in need of the presence of jesus christ thank god for the bible thank god for the letter thank god the Bible, the letter, should take us into a counter with the living Christ, the risen Christ, the living Christ. And it is that a counter where we meet with living Christ that our faith will become credible, our faith will become strong. Your faith, you can exercise it knowing that in your heart, Christ is alive. It's alive. It's not just alive in your heart. You also know is manifest presence. I think, I believe, not just that I think, I believe, that the early church, I also know, the early church, they had the manifest presence of Christ with them. And because of this presence, they were bold. They were bold. They were not afraid of anything. Apart from the fact that the, the, the disciples were with Jesus, they saw him, they spent time with him, they ate they, they ate, they, they, they were just, they were together. Apart from that, when Jesus died and rose, they also had time together. They also had time together. Remember this, when Jesus died and rose, he also spent time with his disciples. That is the reason Christ. It is that Jesus Christ that rose from the dead that I'm talking to you about. You need an encounter with that Christ. You need the presence of that Christ. I repeat myself, thank God for the written word. If all you have is the written word in your head, in your heart, I'm saying to you, I'm encouraging you, take a step further to knowing the risen Christ. Allow the scripture, what the Bible says, tells us about Jesus Christ, the life he lived, Jesus who died. Allow the scripture not to take you to the risen Christ, Christ that is alive today. If I ask you, who is Christ today? Who is Christ? If all you want to tell me, if all you are going to tell me is, oh, Jesus that healed the sick, Jesus that delivered the oppressed, Jesus that walks on the water, you are limited. You are limited in your knowledge of Christ. You are limited. Christ that rose from the dead, you need to know that Christ. You know, the early church, their faith was not just all about the life and death and the, the bearer of Christ Jesus. No, they have, that was not all their faith. Their faith was also about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I think if you look at the epistles from the book of Acts down to the book of uh, Revelation, or every, everything together, you will see that there is so much emphasis on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Emphasis on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if there is, if there is, uh, if there is, Doctrine that is fought by, by the devil is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The devil does not deny the fact that Jesus died. The devil does not have a problem with that. He cannot deny it. <laughs> the, 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 the Jews that kill Jesus, we, they, they, they know. I mean, it's written in the Bible. He cannot deny the fact that Jesus was buried. We know Joseph Ari Matthias and the Nicodemus, the role they played, how they approached Pilate. He can't deny that. But one thing the devil will fight, and it's in fighting, and he will keep fighting, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That Jesus rose from the dead. We are told in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, how the, how the Jews, that is the Pilate and the 
to the palace. They had to bribe the soldiers that we were to keep watch of uh, the tomb of Jesus. That is to the extent they would go to make sure that the, the, the revelation of, of uh, Jesus' resurrection is not given. And today, if you, I, 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 I want to believe and I, I know it that it's not, it's not, it's not an, uh, it's not something that attention is given to. And that is why we are not really knowing Christ. That is why we are not experiencing Christ who, who rose from the dead. Christ that rose from the dead is alive. Is alive. Is alive. Christ that rose from the dead is alive in the believers. But it looks as if he's not alive. It looks as if he's not alive. We have so much efforts. We have so much doctrine about the life Jesus lives, about uh, his death. What about the resurrection? It's time we trust the Holy Spirit to help us begin to see this. And I'm saying, fellowship, going to the scripture that we know by heart, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, by 13 verse 14, that speaks to us about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit being with us or all, all of us. When by that scripture, when we give ourselves to communion, one blessing, like I said the last time, one blessing we are going to end up enjoying is the manifest presence of the risen Christ. Christ that rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. Believe it. Excuse me, please. Christ is risen. He's no longer in the grave. But that presence, the risen Christ's presence, is for those is for those who are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, those who are living with Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to read um, some scriptures. Your relationship with the, with the Holy Spirit should lead you to an encounter with the living Christ, the risen Christ. Have you met Him? Have you met the risen Christ? The scriptures, the written word, as the written word take you on a journey or through the written word, have you have you encountered the risen, the risen Christ? Is he alive in you? You know, Paul had to tell them in the book of uh, I think Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. Let me just see if that is the scripture we should take it from. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. Paul had to tell tell the the Corinthians about about the presence of Christ in his life. So I'm not asking, my question is not out of place if you have met the risen Christ. The risen Christ is, is powerful. Second Corinthians chapter 13, listen to this. This will be the third time I am coming to you by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Every word shall be established. I've told you before and foretold as if I were present the second time. And now being, pre being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest, that if I come again, I will not spare. Verse 3, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, who is not weak towards you, but mighty in you. Paul said, you seek a proof of Christ in me. I think this is where the church is today. The world is seeking a proof of Christ in us. A proof of the living Christ. Okay? Oh, we should not limit Christ to just quoting scriptures. We should not limit Christ to just speaking the word. We should know that Christ is alive. Christ is, is, is living in us. I, I don't have to explain this. There are some spiritual realities that are difficult to explain. I'm simply saying you need to keep pressing. Keep seeking this Christ. Keep keep. Uh, Keep living in communion with the Holy Spirit and you will get to where you will experience Christ as a life. John met him. John, who was so close to Christ, I told you before, who was so close to Jesus, the Christ, met him in the island of Patmos. When he met him, he done on John that Jesus that walked on the street of Galilee, Nazareth, healing the sick, that 5,000, 4,000 walked on the water. He 
was different from this Christ that he met. Whatever way you understand that, I don't, I pray the Lord will give you understanding. It was different when John met him. John, a foremost disciple of Jesus, one that loved Jesus, when he met Christ, Jesus that rose from the dead, he knew there was something different about that Christ. He knew there was something different about him. And I'm saying, we need to meet that same Christ too. We need to meet this same Christ. If we meet him, something will change about Christianity. His presence will become our presence. We talk scriptures, we quote scriptures, but there's no presence of Jesus the Christ. There's no presence. There's no manifest presence. So, how do we tell the world that Christ is alive? By quoting scriptures, by telling them the Bible says, the Bible says, they want to see a proof, evidence of Christ in our lives. Money, the world too, they have money. They have money. Property, they have property. Houses, they have, they have houses. So if, if you want to put something on the table for the world, it's not what they have. What we put on the table for the world is the presence of Christ. Is the tangible, the manifest presence of Christ that when we show up, the presence of Christ will be revealed. And that is what the world cannot stand against because the devil is working so hard to discredit the truth that Jesus rose from the dead. That he rose from the dead. So for Christ to be made manifest in our flesh, for Christ to be made manifest, man, we have to stay in the place of communion, stay with the Holy Ghost or the Christ. Become, we become one with Christ. And when we are one with Christ, the world will know that Christ is alive. It's alive. So, uh, we take his presence everywhere to bless humanity. Oh, dear Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for Christ is alive in us. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Okay. Matthew 28. 28 verse, uh, let's just see what we can get out of the scriptures. A counter with the living Christ. Why is the devil afraid of the good news of uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ? The devil is afraid of it because that's where the power is. That's where the glory is. That is where the power and the glory is. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died. He was buried and he rose from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us so much about that. But let's just quickly read from this, March 28, 11 to 15. Oh, dear Jesus. Now, while they were going, going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests. I said Pilate that time, so I was wrong here. All the things that had happened when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they give a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this sin is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So they did not want the good news that Jesus rose from the dead to go out. The devil, I said, I said before, I'm repeating myself, the devil does not want the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to go out. And the best way to let the world know that Jesus rose from the dead is through his manifest presence. It's through his presence. I think there's too, so much Scripture, talking scripture without presence. Talking scripture without presence. Presence of Christ is what we need in our world today. We need his presence. We need people of his presence. Believers of the manifest presence of Christ. Believers of the tangible presence of Christ to bring to bring healing to the world for the healing of the nation, for harvest of the nation, the presence of Christ. How does this happen? We look at that, John chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 1 from verse 9, 10, how we can become carriers of the manifest presence of Christ. But before we look at that, let me just quickly read chap the same chapter we read, verse 16 and 17. Then the, the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus appointed for them. When 
uh, okay, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Even the disciples of Jesus Christ doubted his resurrection. <laughs> they did. The disciples doubted his resurrection. They did. They doubted his resurrection. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.